Good morning, conference. Welcome to um, session F9. This is a presentation. We started doing presentations several years ago um, by councils that we control about what they're doing for, to produce Liberal Democrat principles in, in, uh, in our councils. So without further ado, please let me hand over to Kingston upon Thames Council. This is a sculpture by David Mack. Our first administration bought this in 1986. It's now an internationally recognised icon for Kingston and worth millions. My name is Roger Hayes, and back in the day when I was a stand-in for Barry Gibb, I moved to Kingston to be PPC. At that time, we had no councillors, third places in the parliamentary seats, and fewer than 10 activists. For more than a generation, the Liberal Democrats have built a borough and a party to be proud of. We've gifted a number of great people to the party and even elected the odd MP along the way. Chris Nicholson, soon to be MP for Streatham, Barbara Jank, the leader of Bristol City Council, the late great Belinda Airbrook, Ollie Grender, Laura Willoughby, Johnny Oates, John Tilley, Steve Harris, Louise Bloom, Tom Burke all cut their teeth on Kingston and Surbiton politics. Our vision has been to build a Liberal society where quality is more important than quantity, where people of all ages feel safe and are able and encouraged to grow and develop in ways important to them, not determined by the state or the local council. Kingston's education is amongst the finest in the country, and not just because our students pass lots of exams, but because we encourage people to think. And by thinking differently and creatively, we've been able to improve, extend and build brand new schools and education facilities. True choice in housing means we must have public housing stock. The Liberal Democrats have been the only ones to build council housing in Kingston over the past 30 years. Of course, the Tories have tried to block almost every Lib Dem initiative. They resisted our successful neighbourhood system. They would love to close our new theatre. They continue to campaign against recent improvements to recycling. And some of their members are even now arguing against us building new schools. Our stereotype may be Surbiton's The Good Life, but the reality can often be the bill filmed on our Cambridge Road estate. Kingston is the smallest London borough, and our population is changing. The number of children has been growing at three times the London average in recent years. We are proud to have Europe's largest Korean population. Kingston University and Kingston College bring over 20,000 students into the town, further adding to the cultural, social and economic diversity. We have run the Council for 12 of the past 20 years and have denied the Tories an overall majority since 1994. Over that generation, we've campaigned on everything, from class sizes to housing need, from lead-free petrol to cycling, from swans to recycling, and now even puppy farming. Don't ever tell me there are no issues in your ward. We've elected a total of 76 different councillors and three great MPs. That little girl is now 18, but Ed, of course, has lost none of his boyish good looks and charm. Although most of Richmond Park constituency is in the neighbouring borough, it is our North Kingston wards that provided first Jenny Tong and now Susan Kramer with their majorities. My friends will tell you about some of the projects which have made a great difference to where we live and of which we are rightly proud. This is Councillor Mary Reid. As Liberal Democrats, we stand under the slogan, Power to the People. Fifteen years ago, we set up neighbourhoods. And what's different about our four neighbourhood committees? Well, they are planning authorities and highways authorities. They are responsible for libraries, community hubs and parks. They employ neighbourhood rangers who are empowered to sort out problems on the spot. And at meetings, anyone can join in the debate, barring certain legal restrictions. Residents, officers and members form working parties to solve local problems together. In my neighbourhood, residents are preparing a community plan which includes policies that refer to the police, 
NHS and Transport for London. So it's not just about council services, but about community leadership across all public services, community partnership at a very local level, and effective consultation. Power to the people, yes, but we also have the courage to give away power to the opposition. One of our neighbourhoods is controlled by the Tories. In fact, our dear leader is in opposition in his own neighbourhood. I should add that we are the only council that hands over scrutiny to the opposition and always ensures that they are in, in a majority on the panel. Oh, and any decision can be called in for scrutiny by 100 citizens, and that includes children. Back to neighbourhoods, which have real money to use on local projects. The ancient marketplace at the heart of our borough has been regenerated, and this flatbed fountain, which was the inspired idea of Kingston Town neighbourhood, has become an aquatic playground um, for children on hot days. Surbiton neighbourhood restored a superb Edwardian clock tower in the town centre and even got an Edward to unveil it. In south of the Barra neighbourhood, we had a vision to replace a dilapidated library and community hall with a stunning community hub. It houses a library, meeting rooms, cafe, IT learning suites, children's centre and a recording studio for local schools and bands. Our culture of openness can also be seen in innovative online facilities for residents, from a bespoke geographical information system to online fault reporting. We pioneered online payments, public access to all minutes and agendas, community websites, postcode related information, and online booking. Where else could an amateur orchestra advertise and sell tickets for concerts through the council website? And we set up the very first council e-petitioning system in the UK. In Kingston, through our innovative ways of working, we have openness, transparency, and real community engagement. And that must tick a few boxes. Next up is Councillor Liz Green, who is Deputy Leader of Kingston Council. In Kingston, putting the environment at the heart of everything we do is what gets us elected. We're currently recycling and composting 47% of our waste, making us one of the best performing councils in the country. But it's been a long haul getting there. In 1986, we introduced the use of recycled paper in the Guildhall. The Tories opposed it. In 1994, the Lib Dem run neighbourhoods introduced door to door green box recycling. The Tories refused to. We now offer curbside recycling for 10 different materials, including food, to all our houses. We all know that food is the worst waste for landfill, with the methane it gives off being 20 times worse for climate change. But it's also the heaviest material for the majority of households. Again, the Tories opposed our new, highly successful scheme. How many other local authorities are ready for the next step? Recycling for flats that is the same as for houses, including food. That's what we're about to start, and it will take us over the 50% mark. But recycling is only part of our environmental agenda. In 2002, the Tories had run down our lovely leafy, leafy borough into a terrible state. It was grubby, and there was litter and graffiti everywhere. I kid you not, there was an abandoned car on virtually every street. We launched our campaign to give Kingston a clean sweep. We went back to basics. We brought back men and women with brooms to sweep our streets properly, getting between the parked cars and into the gullies. People wanted it and they loved it. We also started removing any abandoned car within three days and used the community payback scheme for young offenders to remove the graffiti that they had put there. 